Welcome to this video looking at what happens to ions during electrolysis. So if you get a question in the exam saying what happens to ions at the anode, the first thing you need to remember to do is panic. So remember, positive anode, negative is cathode. So work out what the charge of the anode is. So you should remember that opposites attract. Therefore, if you have a positive anode, the negative ions are gonna be the things that go towards it. Those negative ions are always your non-metals. So for example, your hydroxide ions, your chlorine ions, or your bromine ions. Okay, so we now know that negative ions move to the positive anode. What happens then is they will turn back into their original element. So your chlorine ions will turn back into chlorine gas and so on. They turn back into the non-metal that they were before they became part of that ionic compound. Chlorine will turn back into Cl2, bromine will turn back into Br2, and OH- that's a trickier one, you need to remember that turns back into oxygen, O2, and water, H2O. Okay, so what happens at the cathode then? It's pretty much exactly the opposite. So you do the same thing, panic, positive anode, negative is cathode. So you know that your cathode is negative, therefore, what ions are gonna to go towards it? And in this case, it's gonna be your positive ones, your cations, which are always metals. And when they get there, they turn back into their metals. So they're no longer in solution. It'll turn back into copper, sodium, and aluminium, for example. Right, let's have a look at an example then. So we're gonna have a look at the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. So in there, I only have sodium and chlorine. When I react them together, when I do my electrolysis, it will form sodium and chlorine. Remembering chlorine is diatomic, so it will go around in pairs. So you can see here the symbol equation, which is balanced. And if we have a look at the ions, sodium chloride, because it's a liquid, splits up into Na plus and Cl minus. I've got two of them, keeping with the balanced equation. And that turns back into sodium and chlorine. So my ions are turning back into their original elements. So sodium, which is my cation, and positive will go to my cathode, which is negative, and turn back into the sodium metal. And chlorine, your anion, will go to the anode, your positive anode and turn back into chlorine gas. Okay, a couple of questions for you to have a go at then. First one being, name the electrodes that the ions in lithium hydroxide will go to. So first of all, figure out what the ions are gonna be, figure out the charges on them and tell me where they're gonna go. Number two, explain in terms of ion movement and charge, what happens to the copper ions and the chloride ions during electrolysis. So again, work out which one's the cation, which one's the anion, figure out which electrode they're gonna to go to and tell me what happens when they get there. Six marks, a couple of minutes, pause the video and have a go. We'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's have a look and see how you've done. So question one, name the electrodes that the ions in lithium hydroxide will go to. So the first one is lithium. It's a metal, therefore it's a cation it's gonna to go to your cathode, your negative cathode. Your hydroxide, they've got non-metals in, therefore it's your anion and will go to the positive anode. One mark for each. Question two, explain in terms of ion movement and charge, what happens to the copper ions and chloride ions during electrolysis? So if we start off with copper, you should be able to realize it's a metal, therefore it's a cation, gets you one mark. It will move to the negative cathode for one mark and turn back into the metal, into the solid metal, copper, gets you your third mark. Do the same again for your non-metal, the anions, they're gonna to go to the positive anode, and they're gonna turn back, in this case, it's into a gas. You should know that chlorine is a gas. So there are six different ways you could have got the four marks there. Give yourself a mark out of four. Finally, we have a review question, just the one, which is explain the difference between the movement of cations and anions during electrolysis. All this is asking for is a summary of what we've done in this video, in terms of the charge, in terms of the movement, where do they go and what happens. That brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on subscribe, visit the website, and have a look at the latest video. Thanks for watching.